Hello, welcome to the next episode in Making Terrarian Python. Today we're going to be covering combat. In this video, we're going to get it so that our zombie can attack us, and then we're going to create the functionality and a new item, a new sword item, and we'll use this to attack the zombie back. So right off the bat, in the description, I have linked a new asset. This is the short sword that we're going to be using. Um, and here you can see the short sword. I have it in my res folder inside of a subfolder called weapons. Let's drag and drop it there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this item in our game. So the first thing I have to do is go to our texture data. And remember, we have a solo texture data here. Um, and all, this makes it really easy to simply just uh, duplicate this and then go in and change the zombie static to short sword. That's what I'm calling it, at least. And then I'm going to change the type to a weapon. And then I'm going to change the file path to um, I think it's res slash weapons for me slash and then short sword PNG. Okay, and then for the size, it's just um, tile size by tile size since it's just a one tile size item here. Cool, cool, cool. And so that should automatically load it in, um, seeing that we load all of those automatically. So that makes it pretty easy. Um, but now I want to make a little bit of a structural change. For some reason, I thought it was a good idea to separate the solo textures, the textures that are not connected to any atlas, from the atlas textures. And this makes no sense because after they're loaded in, they're all just textures at the end of the day. Um, and it actually makes it a lot harder to access these textures. So what I'm going to do here is inside of our scene, I'm going to change these solo textures to just textures. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change this where I'm doing gen atlas textures. I'm going to do self.textures.update. And then um, I'm going to get rid of this, highlight the um, gen textures here self.gen textures and then do uh, shift parentheses. So now what we're doing is we're doing self.textures.update and then um, this gen atlas textures that returns all of our textures here um, will actually be added to our texture dictionary. I uh, now be wary in the future if you try to use this update, it does remove duplicates, um, but if you do it right, you shouldn't want duplicates anyways. So this will be fine for us. But now what we have to do is we've been using these solo textures and these uh, atlas textures um, variables all over the place. So literally just go go around and just change every everywhere you see atlas textures and solo textures just change it so in the player make sure you change it in the parameters and also move this back a bit it's kind of hard to see that should be good but we'll just ensure that that works in a bit um but once you've done all of that stuff let's go ahead and add our item to our new to a um let's go ahead and add our item into our world so for this we're going to go to items.py and basically from now on if we want to add an item into the game we first have to dedicate a texture to it and then we have to create an item for it now we don't have to make its own texture um, we could literally just assign it a different texture that's our imported but this part is mandatory um, so i'm going to break a new short sword item and this is going to have a value of a new item data object and then for this we're going to have the name as short sword and then for the item type we're actually going to create something new because right now we only have block item as an item type um, but what we want to do is we want to actually create a new item type and since the short sword is a little bit different in terraria normally uh, weapons in terraria and tools in terraria they rotate around an axis um, short swords are a little different they simply go forward and backwards and there's also an initial rotation on the weapon as well. So I'm going to actually create a dedicated class for a short sword type item. Um, so for this, I'm going to do class short sword item. This is going to inherit from the item class. And then we're going to create our constructor. And if we do def init and press tab, it should do everything for us. And then all we want to do here that's going to be different is in the use, we're going to take in the same parameters as before, self, player, and position. Uh, position is a tuple for better height code highlighting. And I'm just going to pass it for now just to get it up and running. And here for our item type, we're going to do a short sword item. And so what this is going to do is whenever we try to use a, our sword, we're not going to place it like how we do with the block item. We are instead just going to do nothing. What we can actually do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do print using sword. And now what we can do is we can go to um, our our inventory here. So this is where we are seeding our data. Um, you'll see we have self that slots one, two, three. This basically means giving some initial dummy data to our inventory. So if I just um, change the slot one to so self that slots at zero, which is our first slot, if I make it equal to a new short sword item and then make the uh, name be our short sword and then the quantity be one, then if we go to main and all goes well, Okay, so now you can see that we have our sword inside of our inventory. And if I right click, uh, you might see that in our terminal, we have this using sword uh, print statement. 
and then we can of course go to a block and right click and place just fine and we don't get that print statement. This is the benefit of the system that we have created where we can put different types of blocks in our inventory and yet our inventory can handle all of them perfectly fine. So now that we have our sword actually in the game, what we can do is we can get the functionality for getting this zombie to hit us. So let's go ahead and go to our zombie, which is in sprite.py, I believe. And what we can do is, I believe that it actually does have the player itself. So what we can do is we can check some player collision here. So let's do, let's create a new method and I'm gonna do def and I'm gonna do check player collision. And basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just check if first we are attacking, if that's true, uh, then I'm going to uh, check if I'm colliding with the player. If I am, then I will simply kill the player. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do if self.active or attacking, and then we'll say if self.rect.collide rect, and then we need to do self.player.rect, and that should be good. So then all we have to do is we'll just do self dot player dot kill and then all we do here is we do self dot check player collisions here after the move here which should be fine okay so let's do ahead and check this out let's go to main and run it and let's see all right as you can see while the hitboxes are a little jacked up because they're not perfectly cropped to the shape as you saw once it hit the player the player now disappeared and as you can see i can't move anymore it, it still is trying to f follow me but it's working. So let's go ahead and add a health system. Um, and so for this, I'm just going to go to our player and I'm going to have to create some parameters here. So I'm actually going to um, go to our parameters and I'm going to create a new area and I'm going to call it health param or like, I, I don't know, like, yeah, health parameters maybe. And then for now, we're just going to have one. So it's going to be self.health equals parameters at and then quote health. And I'm going to go to our scene and add a new parameter, of course. And this one's going to be our health and it's going to be three. I just prefer putting it like this. It, it just looks nice to me. You can literally just, you could literally just say self.health equals three up here. It doesn't matter. That's just a preference thing. Um, but what we can do here is we can um, do a little check where we will do player here. And what we will do is for now, we can just put an update. We can do if self.health is less than or equal to zero, just in case someone goes hits us and they do more than one damage and we go below zero. So if self.health is less than or equal to zero, then self.kill. Cool, cool, cool. Now, if we go back to our mob, we can do this instead. Instead of just directly killing it, we can do self.player.health minus equals. And then what we're going to want to do is we could just do one or we could do um, some damage here. Um, so what we can do is we can do some stats. Um, and for this, we would have to use our parameters. So we would do um, self dot damage equals parameters at and then this would be our damage. Cool, cool, cool. And then what we can do is we can go here and we can do self.player.health minus equals self.damage. And when, what I'll just do is when I create that mob, I will add the damage parameter. So comma damage. And then for the value, I'll just put one, but you know, stronger ones will have more in the future. And so now if we go to main and run it, um, now if it hits us, you'll see that it's, we still immediately disappear. Now, why is that? The reason is because our game is running at 60 frames per second. And when the zombie hits us, it's hitting us for 60 frames if it hits us for one second. So it's going to subtract 60 from our health. And this isn't good because we don't want the zombie to just melt us once it touches us. We want there to be a little bit of a cooldown. So we can just write a simple little cooldown to fix this. So I'll go back to the sprite here. And what we want to do is we want to make an attack cooldown. Um, and so I'm just going to do some like attacking stats here. So let's do let's do cooldowns and let's do self dot attack cooldown um, equals. And then what, what do we want? We want um, we want like a full second cooldown, right? And then what we can do is we can do self dot counter equals um, self dot attack cooldown. And what we're going to do here is we will do this. What we need to do is we need to create a state here. So we need to actually create a um, past tense self dot attacked equals false. And then we'll go to our check player collision and we'll say if self dot attacking and not self dot attacked. So if we have not already attacked, then we will try to attack. And then what we can do here is in our update is we can do self dot counter minus equals one. And then we can do a check here. We can do if self.counter is less than zero, self.counter 
equals self dot attack cooldown and then self dot attacked equals false. Okay, so a couple things that I forgot to do. First, whenever we do attack, we have to set attack to true. So self dot attacked equals true. And then what we have to do is only start this counter when we do this. So what we're going to do is we'll do if self dot attacked. So if we are if we have already attacked, then we will begin this cooldown. And then what we'll do here is just to make sure that um, when we attack, we reset it properly. So we'll do self dot counter equals self dot attack cooldown. So what this is doing here is we're saying that we're checking the player collision. Once we attack, we are now setting our state to attacked is true. And then we are resetting our counter. And then what we're doing in the update here is we're checking if we have attack, then we want to begin a cooldown. And what we want to do here is we want to just decrement this counter until it reaches zero. And once it reaches zero, then we're going to reinstate our ability to attack by saying self that attack equals false. So this should give us a proper little delay here. If he hits us, there you go. And it should take, yeah, three seconds. Now let's add some knockback. So one thing we're gonna have to change is that we're gonna have to make it so that we don't just immediately stop when we're not pressing A or D. Um, and this was temporary to begin with, but what we're going to do is simply say if self.velocity.x is greater than zero, self.velocity.x, and then we can just minus equal like a friction constant here. And then we can do elif self.velocity.x is less than zero, then self.velocity.x plus equals one. And we'll see if that is or 0 0.1. And then we'll see if that is enough friction. I kind of doubt it. Um, yeah, we definitely have... A little bit of weird things going on here um, with this thing, and I'll, I'll explain how that works in a bit. But let's let's see how this hit works. As you can see, the knockback's pretty crazy. So we can go ahead and change that real quick. But first, let's go ahead and handle that a little bit of like moonwalking you were seeing there. Uh, so what's happening is it's a little bit of like an issue with with rounding and all that stuff and decimal values. What we can do is just add like a simple check here, and we'll just say if the absolute value of self dot self dot velocity to x. Um, is less than 0 0.3 for example then we can just do self dot velocity to x equals zero and this should get rid of any sort of like drifting little tiny drifts um so you'll see that we can just uh, move perfectly fine and we stop we have a little bit of a, a slide at the end which is actually what you want because people don't just stop immediately when they stop they kind of have a little bit of a drift and so now you can see that we get hit let's go ahead and change that because if you notice we are only getting hit um, one direction. We want the direction to be dynamic, basically meaning that if we get hit from the left, then we move to the right and vice versa. So what we can do is we can get the direction. So we can do um, we can do if self dot player dot rec dot x is greater than self dot rec dot x. That means that it is from the right. Then we can do self dot player dot velocity dot x equals. Um, and since it since the player is on the right. We are going to send it in the positive direction. I'm going to do three, and we can do elif self.player.rect.x is less than self.rect.x. Then we can do self.player.velocity.x equals negative three. Now we should be able to be hit from both directions. So we're hit here. Pretty cool stuff. Now we actually have to b find a way to get on that side. Let's go ahead and get over there without getting hit because we don't have much health. Okay, so it did not work there. Um, I'm not really sure why. Let me check. Okay, it did work. Okay, yeah, it is working. So it must have just been like a weird little glitch there or something. So the problem is that we were doing the X and not the center X. We're going to do center X because we were trying to target the center. Um, so we can do rec.center X instead of X. That should fix a little bit of those weirdnesses. Um, but now let's like make it so that we can fight back. Um, and so this could be pretty um, relatively difficult, but we, we got this. So let's go to our player here. Actually, let's go to our items. For this, we're going to do a new method. We're going to do attack. And because we want to do left click and left click is not used, it's attack instead. What we want to do is we want to do a self player. Um, and we can do position. Or actually, we don't even need position. We need player and then we need target. And what we can do is we can simply do, um, for now, we will, we will do target dot kill just to see if we can get this up and running and let's go to our player here and let's do this what we can do is we can do if in the input method here we will do if event handler dot clicked then basically this is saying that we are wanting to attack and we could do this we can go to our item here and we can just create a new method and this method will be def attack and for an item 
we don't want this. We just we just want nothing. So we'll simply pass it. So this way we can call it for all of our items. So we don't have to do anything special, but our short set item will actually do something. So what we'll do is we will do self dot inventory um, dot slots at self dot inventory dot active slot dot attack. And this takes in self and a target. And for the target, we're going to have to actually get a target. And the way we're going to do this, and then we're going to have to get our um, enemy. So for this, we will have to just basically have a new group for our enemies. And this will be self.enemy group equals self.group lists at enemy group. So we created a new enemy group here. And then we go to scene. And here in the scene, let's go ahead and create a new not a new uh, group here. So self dot enemy group equals pygame dot sprite dot group here, and then make sure to add it to the group list. So um, enemy underscore group equals self dot group list or not group list self dot enemy group. So now we should have it added to our group list. Pretty easy to access. Now we just have to make sure that when we do create this mob here, we add it to the enemy group. Now what we can do is we have this enemy group um, in our player so we can now loop through it and check to see if we've collided with them and so what we can do is we can uh, first when we click here we will do for enemy in self dot enemy group if enemy dot rect dot collide rect and then we want to do self dot rect or not self dot rect we want to do self dot get adjusted mouse position then if it does collide with our get adjusted mouse position, then we want to do self.inventory dot slot at self.inventory dot active slot dot attack. And then we send in self and we send in the enemy. And this should theoretically work right off the bat. Let's check. So we have it running, we click and we get an error. Oh, oh, whoops. <laughs> collide points, whoopsies, okay. We want to do collide point on collide rect because the mouse position is not erect as a point. So we click and the enemy goes away. Pretty cool stuff. So nice. So now let's make it fun and let's go to scene and let's just make a thousand of these. Um, <laughs> why not? And then I'll just move them over. So I'll just make this one at 900, um, make this one at a thousand, make this one at 1100. Make that one at 1200 and we can run it and there you go oh shoot <laughs> okay chasing after us got it so as you can see like this is definitely too easy um it's, you know very easy but let's go ahead and make sure that we can't do this with our blocks so if i try to attack with a block you'll see that we can't do anything we're like not attacking at all and we actually got deleted <laughs> uh, so that's that's kind of funny but yeah that's good it's all working so what we can now do is we can actually um, draw the item physically. Now this is kind of difficult. This is a really difficult concept. Um, so I think I'm going to make a dedicated video to um, drawing our like weapon physically with the player because there's a lot that goes into it. Like you have to track it with the player's position. You have to rotate it properly. Um, you have to like have it animate um, all this sort of stuff. It's really, really difficult. So I want to give it a dedicated video. So hopefully we got the functionality down. We just now need to get the animation down. Uh, and that should be good, hopefully, uh, for you guys. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Sorry if this was a little bit windy. Um, please join my Discord if you have any questions. I'll be answering them all there. And consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep this series up. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. See ya.